Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, with a fun crafty idea for you today. And this is great because it's something wonderful you can make for yourself to keep yourself organized or you can give as a gift. This is a little card box and the fun thing about it is that we make it completely from scratch and it's got a little magnet closure. It looks nice and tidy. It would sit on the shelf really well. And inside we have these little tab dividers that separate our handmade greeting cards. So I have a section for a birthday. I've got a section for thank you, thinking of you, sympathy, and holiday. But you can make whatever uh, dividers you want, or you can divide them by month, and you could have like January and have birthday cards for birthdays in January, and so on and so forth. You could even write birthdays on the little divider tabs. I came up with this idea because my mother loves uh, getting blank handmade cards that I've made. So I thought this would be a nice way to give a bunch of cards to somebody. This video is brought to you by Annie's Card Maker Kit of the Month Club. I'm gonna show you a couple of the kits that I've received from them. And and they are just wonderful. You get everything you need to make eight to 10 cards and you get a different theme um, and a different technique that you work on. It might be layering, it might be embossing, it might be stamping. And then you get to learn those skills as you make your cards. They each have a little stamp set, some embellishments, papers, envelopes, and card bases. And um, they're a lot of fun and much more affordable than going to the grocery store to buy your cards. And if you have somebody in your life who's been admiring your handmade cards, this would be a great gift. A subscription to this isn't very very expensive. Your first kit is $9.99 and you also get a free pouch with handy tools. So you're kind of going to get what you need to get started. Now you will have to provide your own adhesive um, and scissors, but other than that, you're good to go with the stuff that's in the kit. So we're going to make this box from scratch today. The cute little box with a magnetic closure. I just, I never get tired of that. <laughs> And it's very quick and easy. So make one for yourself and make one for a friend and you can give them some handmade cards as well or maybe a subscription to the Annie's Card Maker Kit of the Month Club. So without further ado, let's go to the table and I'll show you how to make this. To begin, you're going to need some sturdy mat board or sturdy cardboard for your base and a sharp X-Acto knife and a metal edged ruler. I used mat board for mine because I had it on hand, but you could glue two layers of like cereal boxes together, glue the printed side together so you have a plain side to work with and then you're going to cut two pieces at five by six, two pieces at four by six, two pieces at four by five, and then a lip enclosure which would be an inch and a half wide by six inches long and then I just rounded the corners with a corner rounder. I will list all the measurements in the video description so you can don't have to scramble to jot them down. So to put these pieces together, because each of the um, box pieces we made are the actual size of the box, we need to make some construction strips. So to do that, I am scoring a eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock every inch, but I'm scoring on the half inch. So I'm scoring at half inch, inch and a half, two and a half, three and a half, and so on and so forth. And then I'll go and trim those apart at one inch. So each strip will be one inch wide with a score down the middle. We're going to use some of the tools that come free with your Annie's Card Maker Kit Club subscription. And we've got this cute purple Hindi zippered storage pouch and a clear acrylic block, a bone folder, a tool that looks like a pen, but it's actually a paper piercer and an embossing stylus. And there's also a little handmade by stamp. I'm going to put the block and stamp away for now, but we will use the other tools. I'm using the bone folder to crease all of the little strips that we made. And then I'm using a really strong adhesive to lay down a strip of adhesive on either side of the score line. Make sure you use a really strong adhesive. Um, you can use adhesives like red line tape, score tape, Suquan tape, anything that's a really strong adhesive because these are going to be used to construct the box so you want them to be really, really strong. I went ahead and I cut matting layers out of a beautiful paper that came in one of the Annie's Card Maker Kit of the Month Clubs and I trimmed them to three quarter inches smaller than each of the panels and I'll put those measurements in the video description as well. So to construct this box it's really simple. Um, remember we cut our mat board pieces the exact size we wanted our box to be so these tabs are going to be the attaching pieces. So what you're going to do is trim your construction strips so they are the exact same width as your uh, board. You wanna do that because you don't want any overhang. And then you're gonna taper them. You're gonna cut them in at a little angle on each side so that the, um, uh, the strips will kind of miter up against each other and you won't have a bunch of overlapping. 
Then you're going to remove the liner on one side of the strip only because this stuff is really sticky and it can be kind of um, difficult to work with if you have it all exposed at once. And you are going to nestle that um, construction piece right underneath your mat board. Okay. And you're going to press that down good. So you don't want to, you want to leave about, um, I would say a sixteenth of an inch between boards. So right there, I've got the bottom of the board box with a strip on it, and now I'm going to connect the side. And I want to make sure that it's going to have enough give that I can fold it up, because otherwise, if I glue them too tight, I won't be able to fold the box into a box. It'll be a like a long strip of mat board. So I'm leaving about a sixteenth of an inch gap. I'm leaving that score line completely exposed there. So take your time lining it up, and you want to be able to fold up just like that. So then you want, that is the bottom and the front of the box, so now you want to attach the back of the box so that you get everything kind of in a line, and then you will attach the top and the lip of the box all in one straight strip. Then the two sides of the box go on the bottom of the box, okay? So you, if you're looking at these columns, you've got front of the box, bottom of the box, back of the box, lid of the box, and lift, lip of the box. And then you put construction strips on each of the sides, so they kind of look like wings coming out from the sides. That's where you want the construction strips. Remove the adhesive, and then you're going to fold that around. Now, if you get confused and you make a mistake and you need to undo one of those construction strips, use a hair dryer or a heat tool to heat up those flaps and that will loosen the adhesive so you can peel it back and restick it. Um, other than that, that stuff is stuck. So just remember if you need to undo it, use some heat. And then you want to do the um, second side and just wrap them around and uh, push them down to secure them. Uh, so it's a very easy construction process as long as you do the, uh, the long strip first and then you put the two side wings on. And there is our naked box. Now we're going to attach our magnetic closure. So what I've got here is a magnet closure set. So you get the magnet and then a little metal plate that it catches to. And I'm putting the magnet on the lip because that's going to be more hidden and it is a little bit bumpy. So this will be underneath our pattern paper so you won't see it, but because it will be bumpy, I want it to be on the hidden side more. So that's on the lip, which is six inches wide. So I line that up to the three inch mark. And then uh, to help line it up on the bottom of my box, I'll often just take a little marker, a little water-based marker, and make a little smudge on the um, magnet plate there, and then close the box, and then it usually leaves just enough of a hint of a mark that I can then tape that onto the box part so that when we close the um, when you close the lip, it just kind of catches on its own. And both of those magnet pieces will be covered up by our pattern paper. I cut a piece of navy cardstock that also came in one of the card maker kits to fit the lip, uh, the inside lip of the box so I could completely cover up the uh, magnet and it would be a more durable paper, cardstock's a little more hardy. And then I am using my double-sided ATG tape to do the uh, decorating. This uh, does not need to be as strong as our construction strips, so this tape will work just fine for that. So whatever tape runner you have will be fine, or if you prefer to use a wet glue, you can of course do that as well. So I'm going to put that right over that lip and press it down well just to make sure that that magnet is in there secure and, um, and it's going to look attractive. Then for the remainder of the box, I'm simply gluing down the panels that we had cut earlier. And again, I will put all of the measurements for the matting layers in the video description. I'm just centering it up in the uh, segments of the box and it's just overlapping our construction strips. And I thought this paper was just so pretty for that. Pay attention to the edges of the um, papers as you're gluing them. You wanna make sure you have those edges down well and it will just make the box stay looking nice for longer. I didn't have quite enough of that beautiful foil paper to do all the matting layers, so what I did was I cut some more of that navy cardstock to be the matting layers on the sides, and then I put the pretty foil paper on top of that. So that's a great way to stretch your supplies if you're running low on your favorite paper. I felt that my box needed a little something extra, so I took this very narrow striped navy and white washi tape, and I bordered all of my little uh, paper matting layers. Now, the great thing about this is that it actually is going to protect my paper a little bit more by sealing it down um, to the box a little bit better. So that's going to save wear and tear, and it's an extra detail that I think is really pretty. 
Now we're going to make some dividing cards for our box and you just need to make as many cards as as many categories as you want your box to have. So you want to cut these cards the same size as the front or back of your box. So in this case it's five inches by six inches and it's up to you whether you want to make them tabbed or not. I am making my tabbed so I need to make a template for my tab. So I'm simply cutting a uh, piece of cardstock about two and a half inches wide because I figured that's plenty of room to write and I'm rounding each of the upper corners and that's going to be my tab template. Then I used a ruler to make a depth line on my tabs. That way when I trace them onto each index card I'll know when to cut away the tab. And that will make sense in a minute. So after you have your template made what you want to do is line it up to the edge of your first dividing card and trace it um, until you get to that depth line and then you're just going to make a mark uh, on your card where you need to cut away that um, that area so your tab will remain and you're just going to cut away what's not the tab. I hope that makes sense. And then for the next card you're going to shift over your tab template so you end up with staggered tabs all the way through your, um, your index cards. This next step is optional, but I think it looks nice. I like to distress the edges of the um, labels with some Distress Oxide or any opaque ink. Um, this is nice because if you have any white pen left over and you're using black card like I was, it just kind of hides any of those like tracing lines. And I would just go ahead and do that to every file. If you want, you can add some stamping to this in that same color ink for a tone on tone look, or you can leave it as is. And then you can label each of the tabs with the occasion that you want them to represent. And that pretty much completes your box. So I thought it'd be fun to make some cards to go in there and also introduce you to our sponsor, Annie's Card Maker Kit of the Month Club. Every month you'll get everything you need to make eight to 10 beautifully handcrafted cards at a fraction of the store-bought price. You supply the basics like scissors, glue, and ink, and Annie's provides all the rest. You'll get items like cardstock, exclusive pattern papers, stencils, envelopes, die-cut sheets, stickers, gel pens, stamp sets, brads, sequins, ribbons, and so much more more. And for a limited time, you can try your first kit for only $9.99 plus postage and processing. You'll save 50% off the regular price at about a buck a card. And you'll even get a free gift, that nifty tool case I showed you earlier. There's no minimum purchase required and your satisfaction is 100% guaranteed or your money back. So go ahead and try Annie's Card Maker Kit of the Month Club. You'll save tons of money on cards and your friends and family will appreciate your creative talents. And I do thank them for sponsoring this video. I'll have links to Annie's Card Maker Kit of the Month Club as well as measurements for this project in the video description, so make sure you check it out. Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this project. Until next time, happy crafting.